After enduring 38 years of marriage, I discovered that my wife had been unfaithful with our family doctor. Believing I had passed away, she betrayed our long-standing relationship. Throughout our marriage, we raised three children who are now married themselves, and we have five cherished grandchildren. Despite the turmoil she has caused, I have dedicated myself to working tirelessly, finally achieving a debt-free status and being just two years shy of retirement. When she informed me that she was attending an educator's conference in Arizona, a mandatory event, I reluctantly accompanied her to the airport, planning to bring her back home on Thursday. However, a co-worker informed me that she was seen in Las Vegas at a PBR event, where he sent me a photograph of her at a casino alongside our primary care physician. With Christmas approaching and all our children set to visit, I found myself torn between confronting her immediately and maintaining composure until after the holidays. I considered gathering more evidence by pretending everything was normal and simply picking her up, but I feared the emotional devastation it would cause my children during such a significant time of the year. On a Sunday, my wife performed a solo song at church before boarding a flight on Monday to spend a week engaging in an affair with the doctor. Throughout our four-decade relationship, I never suspected her of cheating, I always felt secure in our marriage. Now, that sense of security has been shattered. I'm relieved that my parents are not around to witness this betrayal. Perhaps I'll catch a flight tomorrow to uncover more of her deceit, possibly using different names to avoid detection. Adding to the complexity, both of my brothers have passed away, leaving me without anyone to confide in except maybe the pastor. However, I suspect she might also be manipulating him. This afternoon, I took decisive action by hiring both a lawyer and a private investigator. We convened at the lawyer's office where they provided guidance on the necessary steps to take. I've arranged for her sister to collect her tomorrow while I'm away at my camp for a few days. So far, I've managed to keep my knowledge of her infidelity hidden from her, resisting the urge to confront both her and the doctor. This restraint allows me to protect myself and gather more substantial evidence. While I can't pursue legal action for alienation of affection, I am determined to tarnish the doctor's reputation and future prospects. Returning home tonight poses another dilemma. My 84-year-old mother-in-law, who has been widowed for 12 years, will be heartbroken by the news of my wife's infidelity. Additionally, my wife has three married sisters, all in stable, long-term marriages, who are arriving at our home for Christmas tomorrow night. I've prepared grilled steaks for them, a tradition since my father-in-law's passing every Christmas. If I don't attend, it could raise suspicions that my wife might fabricate an illness to stay here. Consequently, I've decided to return home, knowing that not doing so would disrupt our plans to hunt with my son and grandsons before Christmas. Despite having only spoken to her briefly and mainly through text, I believe she remains unaware of my discoveries. I provided the gate and house codes to the private investigator who, with the help of an IT specialist, accessed her desktop while she was at work. Although I don't fully grasp how he managed this, it proved effective. Currently, I'm not in daily contact with either the private investigator or my lawyer and remain unaware of all the information they've uncovered. I have a scheduled meeting with both next Friday morning, one week from tomorrow. Managing my anger has been challenging, and I feel that continuing to pay the private investigator might be unnecessary. However, my attorney advises me to keep collecting evidence until the right moment to confront her. My plan is to meet with the private investigator next week and hopefully seize his services thereafter. Typically, I spend a week before and after Christmas at camp, allowing me to maintain my composure so that my wife remains oblivious to my knowledge of her actions. If I can delay confronting her until I return home, I might avoid an explosive reaction and spare my children from additional trauma during this already difficult period. My son and grandsons are scheduled to go hunting the week before Christmas, a cherished annual tradition. It's been nearly two weeks since I've seen my wife, and the love I once felt for her has transformed into deep-seated hatred and contempt. My strategy involves meticulously organizing the evidence I've collected, planning to present it after Christmas lunch. During the gift exchange with our children and grandchildren, I intend to have her open her gifts last, confront her publicly, and seize her phone to leave. My next move will be to visit the doctor's home to deliver the evidence to his wife and family before officially filing for divorce based on his infidelity. Sharing my story in real time here has been my sole outlet during this ordeal. Update 3, last Thursday evening, I returned from camp to find my wife at home. Exhausted from sleepless nights, our conversations remained minimal. On Friday night, we hosted our Christmas gathering with her mother and three sisters at our home, successfully keeping her betrayal under wraps. Saturday was spent mostly away from home, and after attending church on Sunday, I returned to my camp. My son, grandson, and oldest grandson joined me there on Sunday night for hunting throughout the week. I arrived back home tonight with no immediate plans for tomorrow. 
Our children and grandchildren will attend church with us on Sunday, followed by Christmas lunch and gift giving. I've managed to keep my emotions in check, ensuring that no one suspects the life-altering situation I'm enduring. I've re-evaluated my approach to revealing her affair and decided against confronting her during Christmas. Instead, I have an appointment with my attorney on Tuesday morning, where I intend to present all the evidence gathered by him and the investigator, along with the divorce papers he has prepared. I plan to gather my son and two daughters for a family meeting to disclose her affair to them and confront her simultaneously. I aim to execute this plan on Tuesday night. Confronting the doctor and his wife remains uncertain, but my goal is to ruin his reputation and career by any means necessary. I appreciate all the supportive messages, they have been invaluable during this challenging time. Update 4, we successfully navigated Christmas with our children, grandchildren, and in-laws. On Monday morning, I met with my pastor, who facilitated a meeting with me and the doctor's wife. We agreed to confront our spouses on Monday night, requiring them to provide detailed letters about their affairs. I ensured that my wife could not speak during this confrontation. I confronted her with evidence of her trip to Vegas and her involvement with the doctor, demanding she detail every aspect of the affair in writing. If her letter contradicted any of the evidence I possessed, I made it clear there would be no chance for reconciliation. On Tuesday morning, I met with my attorney to review the collected evidence and received further legal advice. Later that afternoon, I approached the doctor's employer, insisting on his termination. That Tuesday night, my children arrived, and their mother disclosed the affair to them. They were understandably shocked and hurt. My wife has since gone to stay with our daughter. I'm now contemplating my next steps, seeing no possibility for reconciliation. I'll decide on further actions against the doctor once I've resolved my own marriage. My wife admitted to everything and provided detailed answers in her letter. I appreciate all your well wishes, I'm managing as best as I can under the circumstances. Update 5, I'll attempt to answer your questions. 1. Asterisk asterisk did you ask her why? Asterisk asterisk yes, I confronted her about her infidelity. She claimed she didn't know why it happened, explaining to me and our children that she felt like an addict, unable to stop destroying her life. She told our children that no child should ever be disappointed or embarrassed by their mother's actions, asserting that they didn't deserve the shame associated with her behavior. I won't repeat everything she said because I'm unsure of its veracity. 2. Asterisk asterisk how did she act? Asterisk asterisk she appeared completely devastated and remorseful, pleading for forgiveness from both me and our children. She understands the gravity of her actions. 3. Asterisk asterisk how did my children react? Asterisk asterisk one child informed her about the affair, while the other two felt it would have been easier to hide such a betrayal. 4. Asterisk asterisk do I want to stay married? Asterisk asterisk yes, I do. This is why I never considered cheating on my wife. 5. Asterisk asterisk have I met the doctor's wife and informed her? Asterisk asterisk yes, we have met twice and communicated multiple times via phone and text. 6. Asterisk asterisk do I care about his family by seeking his termination? Asterisk asterisk my primary concern is for the doctor's wife and her patients, I don't want his misconduct to affect others. 7. Asterisk asterisk am I divorcing her? Asterisk asterisk I'm uncertain at this point. 8. Asterisk asterisk have I sought therapy? Asterisk asterisk not yet. I need to find a way to make this ordeal disappear. If you know anyone who can help, please let me know. Otherwise, I might consider therapy, but I recognize that every situation is unique with its own complexities. While keyboard advice can be easy, it often lacks understanding of the nuances I'm dealing with. Some comments have been incredibly supportive, and a particular Reddit user has provided invaluable wisdom and encouragement. It's strange how I've connected with someone anonymously who shares a similar spirit. I'll continue browsing various forums, so feel free to ask me anything. Given the current state of my marriage, I don't have the time to spend quality moments with my wife. She's at my daughter's home instead of with her in-laws, even though her father is deceased and her mother is 84. I don't want her mother to be burdened with this situation. My wife is staying at her baby daughter's husband's home, where they don't have children yet, reducing the likelihood of her turning my children against me. This is especially true for my youngest daughter, a spirited 10-year-old who has spent countless hours outdoors with me. She won't allow my wife to speak ill of me or lie about me. The first text from the doctor was him complimenting her appearance, referring to a funeral we both attended. My sister-in-law informed me that my mother made an insensitive comment about her breast implants 30 years ago, implying she would show them to someone else. I can't forgive her for being so unfaithful and degrading. She's a beautiful woman who's been admired all her life, but time has caught up with her and she can't handle it anymore. Despite her attempts to stay ahead, it's an inevitable race she cannot win. I haven't disclosed my plans to her, and I assume she doesn't know. 
My daughter mentioned that her phone is dead, and she hasn't communicated with anyone except our children. I'm unsure if she realizes the situation. The doctor's wife contacted me after he was fired, threatening to pursue my wife's job. When I confronted my wife, the doctor's wife was already aware and demanded he answer the same questions I had asked her. Update 6, I had a brother who was 14 years younger than me. He was a college professor living eight and a half hours away from our hometown. Tragically, he died in a motorcycle accident in 2017, leaving behind a 24-year-old daughter who is now married and resides in a different state from her mother. She has brought her newborn home to visit her mother and in-laws. My sister-in-law has never remarried. Last night, I called her to find out when my niece would be returning home, only to learn that she is currently staying with her husband's parents, who live about 40 minutes away from my sister-in-law. My children are overwhelming me with attention, so I'm planning a road trip to visit my great-nephew, who is named after my late brother and me. I expect to arrive late tonight. I asked my sister-in-law to reserve a hotel room for me, but she refused vehemently, insisting I stay with her and watch movies while eating ice cream. I'm unsure when I'll return. I haven't spoken to, seen, or communicated with my wife since Tuesday night and have blocked her number. I informed my son of my plans and instructed him to go to the office and our company's rental property, a house that's recently been vacated by renters and fully renovated with the intent to sell. I told him to notify his mother to collect anything she needs from our home and move into the rental property, where she would pay rent to my son, who would then pay my company. I'm having new keypads installed on the gates and doors to my house on Wednesday, so if she needs her belongings, now is the time to retrieve them. Update 7, when I called my sister-in-law, I informed her that I would be visiting alone to see my niece and her newborn. She inquired why my wife wasn't accompanying me and I simply stated that there were some issues I would explain upon arrival. I arrived around midnight to find her taking a freshly baked pound cake out of the oven, the best thing I've eaten in weeks. I shared all the details of my ordeal with her, breaking down emotionally as we spoke. She was incredibly supportive, shedding tears alongside me and comforting my bruised ego, which helped me feel somewhat better. I went upstairs to bed around 3 a.m. The next morning, she prepared me breakfast with bacon and eggs. As I ate, she informed me that while I might set the rules and manage the household back home, that wouldn't be the case at her house. She then outlined my schedule for the day. 1. Asterisk asterisk 1 colon 0 0 p.m. Asterisk asterisk I had a long overdue haircut appointment, which I agreed to attend. 2. Asterisk asterisk after the haircut asterisk asterisk we plan to go to Dillard's to purchase clothes, as I had lost over 30 pounds in 3 weeks. 3. Asterisk asterisk later asterisk asterisk we were to attend a friend's house for a bonfire and fireworks event that evening. 4. Asterisk asterisk today asterisk asterisk we would go to church together and she intended to visit her parents in the afternoon. 5. Asterisk asterisk tonight asterisk asterisk she would cook supper for us, with her daughter and son-in-law joining to eat and socialize. 6. Asterisk asterisk tomorrow asterisk asterisk her son-in-law is taking me deer hunting with dogs on an 8,000 acre timber company property where he works. He's off all week, and if I wish, I can stay and hunt until Wednesday. She will wash my clothes and feed me, although I've never experienced this before and am unsure of what to expect. 7. Asterisk asterisk until I leave asterisk asterisk we agreed not to discuss my problems again until I depart for home. I complied with her instructions. She accompanied me to her usual salon, mentioning she would introduce me as someone new, even providing them with my first and middle names. When she asked where I was from, I told her Detroit, but my accent likely betrayed otherwise. My sister-in-law quickly responded by labeling me as a logger. Our next stop was Dillard's, where I hadn't shopped in years. I ended up purchasing three new pairs of pants, four shirts, two pairs of shoes, a tie costing $75, and a heart-shaped suit by Schaefer Mark, which she insisted was the only suit my late brother would wear. I was unaware of how particular he was about his clothing. Additionally, I bought a new belt, and she persuaded the store to hem the suit while we waited. On our way home, she informed me that I would be her date for a church party. I went along with it, but at the party, I introduced myself as being from Atlanta, working in road grader sales, and mentioned having been married and divorced four times. We arrived late and left early to avoid any negative attention for lying in church. She sat right next to me, touching my hand as we walked out. Despite feeling foolish and embarrassed, I genuinely laughed and had a good time with my 46-year-old sister-in-law, something I hadn't done in three weeks. I'm planning to go hunting tomorrow and might stay until Wednesday, though I need to be back at work on Friday. I've spoken to my son a few times, he believes we should seek medical help for my wife, as she remains mostly silent and stays in her bedroom at our daughter's house. Her phone is frequently dead, and communication with her is limited to our youngest child.
The doctor's wife sent her a lengthy text, calling her derogatory names, but I haven't communicated with my wife since she asked about my whereabouts. I told my daughter that I would never forgive her, and she didn't blame me for my lack of forgiveness. My son commented that she looks like death, and I still see no path to reconciliation. However, I'm not ready to file for divorce until I'm entirely certain. Some suggest divorcing and then reconciling if I change my mind, but that feels like a waste of time, energy, and money. If I decide to divorce, it will be final. I also won't sue the doctor if I don't divorce my wife, but if I do, I intend to sue him to cover the divorce settlement costs. I've accepted that this situation won't resolve quickly and that my life will be forever changed. I began keeping a journal today, realizing it helps organize my thoughts. Thank you again for your support, it has been instrumental in keeping me grounded. Update 8, yesterday morning, my daughters took my wife to the emergency room due to severe dehydration. Tests revealed her kidney function was compromised, and she exhibited signs of confusion. She was admitted, a drip was started, and additional lab tests were scheduled for today. A psychiatric evaluation was also ordered, indicating she would likely remain hospitalized for most of the week. My son informed her sisters that she was hospitalized and that I was out of town, keeping them unaware of her affair. I plan to visit her mother and oldest sister this weekend, reflecting that I should have done so last Friday before leaving town. I'm still at my sister-in-law's house, often referred to as Sparky's. I hunted yesterday, but with rain forecasted today, I decided against it and stayed home instead. Last night's dinner included fried steak, mashed potatoes with gravy, homemade biscuits, apple cobbler, and ice cream. She had a few tasks to complete this morning but instructed me to be dressed upon her return and ready to engage in some form of rambling, whatever that entails. I mentioned that rainy days are good for two things and that I wasn't sleepy. She responded by saying that my children don't need both parents in the hospital due to dehydration, prompting me to comply with her instructions. I'm grateful to be here, as I don't wish to speak with friends just yet, nor do I want to be at work. With my laptop, phone, and an assistant co-worker who's been with me for 25 years, business operations continue as usual. My co-worker is aware of the affair, having informed me about the Vegas trip. Venting all of this on Reddit has been therapeutic. I understand if some of you are tired of my posts, I've started journaling privately and can continue writing there. If you've lost interest in my story, that's okay. Thank you again for all your thoughtful and supportive messages. They have been incredibly helpful, especially in light of the troubling text I received from my wife and the doctor. Your support has been a significant factor in maintaining my clarity during this tumultuous time. Update 9, I reached out to my wife's sister, providing her with a basic overview of the affair and the circumstances that led to my wife's hospitalization. She was genuinely shocked and expressed sincere apologies and sympathy. My mother-in-law is leaving tomorrow morning on a trip with three other widows, friends of my daughters, who enjoy taking bus tours. She assured me she wouldn't disclose the affair or the psychiatric evaluation to them, instead explaining that my wife's condition wasn't severe enough to warrant my return from the trip and that I was with others, making my presence unnecessary at this time. She also mentioned that my mother-in-law was very concerned about me since they left my house, noting that I appeared to have lost myself. The sisters will assist my daughters and daughter-in-law with the hospital stay, and one of them will take my wife home until she's able to move out of our house. I contacted my baby daughter, instructing her to visit the office, cash a check, purchase a card, and deliver it to her grandmother's house. I provided a name stamp at the office for her to sign the card with a personal note expressing love and well wishes for the trip. Thank you once again, Reddit, for helping me take the steps I needed to. I hadn't considered doing so without your input. Update 10, it turns out that, rambling, included trips to the grocery store, dry cleaners, paying the electrical bill, a visit to Home Depot, and, importantly, a clinic test that cost $112 and took 15 minutes. Shortly after, I discovered I do not have a sexually transmitted disease. The private investigator straightforwardly informed me that there's no man with questionable morals staying at my house. For those advising me to go through this humiliating experience, rest assured, I am clean. My wife's kidney function has improved, but the psychiatric evaluation revealed she suffered a psychotic break. She is confused about her location and believes that we were involved in a traffic accident and that I am deceased. She is distressed, thinking her funeral was held without her, and is crying and mumbling incomprehensible things. Tonight, they moved her to a hospital specializing in mental trauma, expecting she will fully recover within days or weeks. She will have no contact with anyone for 10 days. My middle daughter will serve as the family contact for afternoon updates until she can be visited. This entire situation has become an unbelievably unnecessary mess. 
I'm still at Sparky's, and she has scheduled a 9.30am appointment with a psychiatrist she had seen for two years following my brother's tragic death. When I went upstairs to shower and put on my pajamas, I noticed that all my pristine white fruit of the loom boxer shorts were gone, replaced by boxer briefs from Docker's trading company. The waistband on each pair reads, Go Buck Bear, in red, black, neon blue, maroon, and dark and light grey. When I questioned her about it, she cryptically replied, The 60s called, and one of the ugly drawers back, along with a dismissive remark about the boy's next breath. Update 11, I returned home Thursday night after an appointment with a psychologist recommended by my sister-in-law, whom I had reluctantly met with due to lingering anger and discomfort discussing the details of my wife's affair. On Friday, I had to attend work for a contract signing meeting that required my presence and signature on a modified agreement. In the afternoon, I met with my children to discuss their mother's situation. The clinician advised that we submit a discharge plan to prepare for her treatment fully. I remained steadfast in my decision that she couldn't return home to live and that arrangements should be made for her to move into a rental property. Her status report today was encouraging, showing progress over the weekend. The medical team also wants to schedule family sessions by the end of the week. I informed my children that I wouldn't attend any family sessions, emphasizing that her recovery isn't my responsibility and that I won't participate in it. I'm uncertain if they agree with my approach, but it's the path I'm choosing. I committed not to file for divorce within the next six months. On Sunday, I attended church and sat in our usual spot, where none of the doctor's family members were present. I refrained from inquiring about their status with my pastor because I simply don't care. This afternoon, I met with a psychologist recommended by my pastor. The 74-year-old professional works part-time from an office behind his home. Our meeting was productive, he outlined goals we'd like to achieve together, and I agreed to follow his guidance, finding comfort and trust in his approach. Additionally, an investigator from the State Medical Board's examiner's office is scheduled to visit my office Wednesday morning following a complaint filed by my attorney against the doctor. I will be required to provide a sworn deposition regarding the affair, detailing every step I need to take in response to her betrayal. While I don't believe she's faking her mental breakdown, I find it challenging to maintain sympathy for her actions. Update 12, I haven't posted an update recently because not much has changed. Here's a brief summary. 1. Asterisk asterisk my wife is still undergoing treatment and has agreed to remain in the facility for 30 days. Asterisk asterisk while she is showing improvement, my children agree that she requires additional in-house treatment. I haven't spoken to her directly since December 27th, and she has withdrawn from her retirement account to cover medical costs. 2. Asterisk asterisk I haven't met with my mother-in-law yet. Asterisk asterisk she and her daughters have visited my wife. I texted her, expressing my intention to talk when I felt ready. She has called to check on me multiple times, showing sadness but also strength. 3. Asterisk asterisk no updates on the doctor, AP. Asterisk asterisk his house is up for sale, and I don't know if he's separated or still with his wife. 4. Asterisk asterisk I've attended counseling twice and I'm actually looking forward to my Monday meeting, asterisk asterisk finding it helpful. 5. Asterisk asterisk the affair is being widely rumored, asterisk asterisk but I continue to attend church and maintain my composure despite being thoroughly embarrassed by her actions. 6. Asterisk asterisk my children and grandchildren are doing well. Asterisk asterisk I've kept myself busy with work and managing my son's re-election campaign, which has kept me occupied. 7. Asterisk asterisk I've noticed more attractive women around me lately. Asterisk asterisk I'm not sure if this is good or bad, but it's something I've become aware of. I believe that's all for now. Update 13, my wife was released from the hospital on Tuesday and moved to a rental property owned by my company. It's an older house but has been completely renovated, including stud walls. I still haven't spoken to her since December 27th. She has written two letters expressing her remorse and seeking my forgiveness. I haven't responded, except to inform my children that I've read her letters and will contact her when I'm ready to discuss our past and future together. We've employed a housekeeper who has worked for my wife for over 20 years. I arranged for movers, under the guidance of my daughter and housekeeper, to transport a bedroom suite and other essentials to create a comfortable living space for my wife. They purchased new furniture which has been ready for her release for over a week. She has also made arrangements with the housekeeper to employ her daily as needed, ensuring she has a driver and sitter while her sisters stay overnight until she's able to move out. On Tuesday night, I had dinner with my mother-in-law at her home, where I explained my position. She was very understanding and expressed her support for me. According to my son, his grandmother visited my wife last night and showed little sympathy towards her. She didn't spare my wife's feelings when discussing her betrayal, marking the first time they addressed it together. I'm planning to visit Sparky's tomorrow, where she has tickets for a concert on Saturday night. 
She and a friend were supposed to attend, but her friend cancelled due to a co-worker's funeral. On Saturday, we'll fly to North Carolina in the afternoon and return Sunday afternoon. I'm looking forward to doing something different and hoping to enjoy it. Additionally, I'm finding counseling beneficial and anticipate continued improvement through weekly sessions, which help me compartmentalize the different aspects of my life. Update 14, I'll provide an update on my current status. Thank you to everyone who has shown interest. I continue with weekly counseling sessions, which have been instrumental in helping me organize, process, and act upon my thoughts, emotions, and plans. Many have inquired about my well-being, and the simplest way to answer is to say that I'm fine, and I am. However, I am also heartbroken, angry, lonely, and deeply saddened by the state of my life and marriage. I'll attempt to answer your questions. 1. Asterisk asterisk have I sat down with my wife to discuss our situation? Asterisk asterisk yes, we've had several conversations about how we reached this point, the specific details of her betrayal, and how to move forward. These discussions have involved just the two of us and our children. I've also attended two of her counseling sessions, one individually and the other with our three children. 2. Asterisk asterisk can I reconcile with her at this point? Asterisk asterisk no, I cannot, and here are my reasons. The affair was physical. It involved planning a trip and deceiving me, making me unknowingly drive her to get on a plane, profess her love, and then spend several days with him in a hotel. She will require lifelong medical treatment, including medication and counseling, due to a psychotic break resulting from her betrayal. This is not comparable to cancer, dementia, or any other natural, unavoidable disease. The person I loved was honest, full of life, joyful, revered, respected, and beautiful. That person no longer exists, she is now broken, sad, pitiful, and medicated. She has retired, but her condition is irreparable. 3. Asterisk asterisk have I asked my lawyer to draft a settlement agreement? Asterisk asterisk yes, I have. I provided a full disclosure of all financial information to her and my children, ensuring that my children are satisfied and that I've treated her fairly. 4. Asterisk asterisk does she remain remorseful and willing to discuss a settlement or divorce? Asterisk asterisk yes, she remains remorseful, begging for forgiveness, and is unwilling to discuss a monetary settlement or divorce. 5. Asterisk asterisk do my children want me to reconcile with their mother? Asterisk asterisk yes, they do, but they seem to understand my position. 6. Asterisk asterisk was Easter a significant family weekend? Asterisk asterisk yes, it was a large family gathering. This Easter, my wife and I were excluded from their plans, suggesting they are trying to establish a new normal. 7. Asterisk asterisk what is the status of the doctor's case with the state board? Asterisk asterisk I have no information regarding the current status of the doctor's case before the state board. He is employed at an emergency room in a neighboring state. Thank you all for your concern and support.